Hi dear friends welcome back to curious with I am Dr Mohsina today the top uh, the topic for today's video is an important topic it is wobbler syndrome in dogs or caudal cervical spondylomyelopathy Wobbler syndrome or caudal cervical spondylomyelopathy is a, is a disease of the neck that is the cervical spine seen mainly in large and giant breeds of dogs and these dogs experience compression of the spinal cord and the spinal nerve roots resulting in nervous system deficits and or neck pain approximately 50% of the cases of wobbler syndrome seen in dogs occur in doberman pinscher and other breeds commonly affected include Weimaraner, Great Dane, Rottweiler, Dalmatian, etc. And despite certain breed predilections, any dog breed may be affected, including small dogs. Most giant breed dogs with Wobbler syndrome are diagnosed before the age of three, although symptoms may emerge later in life. Doberman pinchers and other large breed dogs with Wobbler syndrome usually diagnosed. a bit older that is a mean age of onset is 6 years so giant breeds are diagnosed early at the age uh, on uh, age before 3 but large breeds before 6 years may have a heritable basis in borsois 5 to 8 years basset hounds less than 8 months doberman pinscher more than equal to 2 years great danes less than 2 years slightly more males than females are diagnosed with wobbler syndrome The bony malformation can compress the spinal cord from the top and bottom from the top and sides or just from the sides. And dynamic spinal cord compression always occur with any type of compression that means compression that changes with different positions of the cervical spine is called dynamic spinal cord compression. Coming to the clinical signs of Wobbler syndrome strange wobbly gait neck pain or stiffness weakness possible short strided walking possibly unable to walk muscle loss near the shoulders worn or scuffed toenails from uneven walking increased extension of all four limbs and difficulty getting up from lying position neurologic deficits range from mild ataxia of the pelvic limbs to tetraplegia affected dogs often keep their neck flexed ventrally as she as seen in this picture and there may be caudal cervical pain there are two forms of the disease one is disc associated wobbler syndrome having an older age of onset and other one is bony associated wobbler syndrome which have an younger age of onset and often seen in giant, giant dog breeds now let's see the first one that is disc associated wobbler syndrome it usually affects middle aged approximately 7 year old large breed dogs and especially doberman pinscher in this condition one or more disc between the neck vertebrae extend into the spinal canal and squeeze the spinal cord so here the vertebral disc is the one have, uh, causing problem to the spinal cord so this picture shows the sequence this this is a sequence of pictures showing the typical posture and gait of a doberman affected by disc associated wobbler syndrome Bony associated compression affects young usually 4 years or younger giant breed dogs like great danes mastiff and rottweilers and in this condition abnormal bone growth occurs in the vertebrae of the neck and squeezes the spinal cord
For both forms of the disease, signs occur slowly or suddenly and includes incoordination and an abnormal stride when walking on all four limbs. Now let's see the causes. Nutrition in some cases like excess protein, calcium and calories have been a proposed cause in Great Danes. Fast growth is suspected to be a cause in large dog breeds. Coming to the diagnosis of Wobbler syndrome, it is usually diagnosed by visualization techniques like X-rays, myelographs, computed tomography or CT scan and uh, MRI scan that is magnetic resonance imaging. About X-rays, spinal radiographs may show Malalignment or remodeling of the vertebrae, narrowing of one or more disc spaces or spondylosis deformance. So here the, uh, this picture shows cervical spondylomyelopathy or Wobbler syndrome in a 6 year old Doberman pincher. This illustrate the disc associated form of the disease that is uh, there is a tipping or dorsal deviation of the cranio dorsal aspect of the body of C6 relative to the caudal portion of C5. CT or myelography or MRI usually reveals a marked stenosis at the cranial orifice or at the level of the facets of the mid cervical or caudal cervical vertebrae. In this picture there is a myelogram of a dog with Wobbler syndrome. At uh, one level there is severe spinal cord narrowing shown by arrow which has been caused by compression of the spinal cord by ligament and joint capsule from above as well as from the disc below. Adjacent to this level there is a second level of spinal cord compression caused by a disc herniating from below shown by the arrowhead. The spinal cord is normal and it is not under compression at the disc space nearest to the dog's head uh, shown by the star. The relative diameters of the spinal cord at each of these three levels is indicated by the vertical black bars. And here comes the MRI of young Great Dane with Wobbler syndrome. Note the severe spinal cord compression caused by overgrowth of the joints at the top of the spine shown by arrow. And there is another problem shown by the arrow head a little bit higher up. Diseases that will need to be ruled out through a differential diagnosis include discospondylitis, neoplasia and other inflammatory spinal cord diseases. Now let's see what is the treatment of Wobbler syndrome. The best treatment for Wobbler syndrome depends on the, the cause and severity of the problem as well as the suspected duration of spinal cord compression. Dogs with mild signs may improve with rest and medication but surgery is often necessary and most dogs approximately 80% do well with surgery. So there is surgical management and non-surgical management of the disease. First let's see the non-surgical management. Non-surgical management may allow some stabilization of the condition at least in the short term. But it is only recommended for dogs with mild pathology like small disc bulges and very slow disease progression.
The following non-surgical treatments are available like exercise modification, absolute rest in the short term and modified exercise in the long term, anti-inflammatory medications, physiotherapy, manipulative therapies, laser therapy, ultrasound and hydrotherapy. Now let's see the different surgical techniques include stabilization, decompression and disc replacement etc. And decompressive surgery or ventral slot procedure is done for dogs affected only by extrusion or protrusion of the intervertebral disc with no evidence of instability or compression of the nerve roots. So such dogs are appropriate for the ventral slot or decompressive technique. This involves removal of a window of bone within the casing of the spinal canal and allowing to remove any bulging or ruptured inter intervertebral disc material that might be compressing the spinal cord. So this is a uh, schematic illustration of ventral slot technique. You can see a small uh, window of bone is removed and the bulging or ruptured intervertebral disc is removed through that window. Then vertebral distraction fusion. It is a very effective surgical treatment for dogs with Wobbler syndrome where compression of the nerve root is present and pathological instability is suspected. In addition, cervical vertebral distraction fusion will address the spinal cord compression associated with different positions of the neck that is dynamic lesions are also addressed by this technique and it prevents ongoing repetitive trauma to the spinal cord next method is cervical disc prosthesis it is a more modern technique or also called disc replacement here the cervical disc replacement it is developed due to the potential benefit of preserving motion of the neck in dogs affected with Wobbler syndrome and the preservation of motion may prevent Wobbler syndrome developing in adjacent location or in the, in the dog's neck so this is the lateral and ventrodosal views of post operative radiograph of a properly positioned artificial disc placed between C5 and C6. This disc provides excellent distraction but also allows 30 degrees of mobility in the intervertebral space. So this, uh, these pictures, in the first one shows the posture of dog before disc arthroplasty and the second one shows posture after disc arthroplasty. And uh, here you can see the MRI of the above dog with disc associated Wobbler syndrome showing two sides of spinal cord compression. Here the uh, vertebral disc is the one having causing problem, causing compression to the spinal cord. Dogs which have had surgery should have their activity restricted two to three months post-operatively to allow bone ankylosis at the site of surgery. Physiotherapy is essential for post-operative dogs to avoid muscle loss, atrophy, fusion of bones and to hasten recovery. Coming to the living and management, to protect dog from further injury, do not allow any jumping or running for at least 2 to 3 months after treatment and body harnesses should be used in place of neck collars since neck collars can harm dog's already compressed spinal structure. Diet may also need to be adjusted like cutting back on protein, calcium and excess calories is often recommended in dogs that are affected by cervical spondylomyelopathy or Wobbler syndrome. So that's all about Wobbler syndrome in dogs. So this is a very important topic as far as all veterinary exams are concerned. 
so please go through all the different aspects like the etiology diagnosis treatment and post operative management etc so if the video is informative please like it and share it with your friends and comment your suggestions if you are new to this channel and not subscribed yet please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a video see you soon with another video thank you